Hello, Namaste. I welcome you all to the 83rd session of Guru Bodha. This session is Namaste. brought to you by easyairwader.com. I dedicate this and all of my works as the holy feet of Dr. A. Chandrasekhar Udupa. This class is made live exclusively for Easy Ayurveda weekly class subscribers. If you have not subscribed yet, please go to easyairwader.com slash video dash classes. So coming back to this session, there was this uh, discussion on, on, on the stiff stiffness in one of the previous uh, sessions stiffness means a uh, very different uh, things in uh, ayurveda so this was the a question to begin with it says i want to know if my understanding is right stiffness and muscle tension is a sign of vata aggravation which is also dryness created by dryness uh, created because dryness is a characteristic of vata dosha and to reduce vata dosha fermentation and uh, with hot water uh, is done to reduce dryness thereby adding water and bringing in kapha to that region and uh, rendering it soft and supple so before i get into the nitty gritties of uh, this question and uh, to answer it in uh, in great detail uh, first of all as a kaichikisa expert of the group i uh, cordially request dr raghuram sir to explain regarding the uh, pathology of the stiffness, bone stiffness, muscle stiffness, even joint stiffness, ligaments, how to see as per Ayurveda, uh, as per, uh, from the prism of Kai Chikisa. Raghuram sir, please. Okay, thank you, Hebal sir. So, yes, stiffness, uh, again, it can be attributed to many properties of uh, Vata. Uh, here we need to see how each dosha is meddling with each dosha and also how it, uh, doshas are meddling with uh, the dhatu is very importantly the stiffness when we are speaking we speak about uh, the muscle stiffness the joint stiffness and the bone stiffness and lot lot more so water can be brought into the picture here because of the ruksha guna it causes uh, what we can call it as it meddles with uh, the kapha and the kapha properties mamsa we know is a dhatu which belongs to the kapha varga so kapha is predominant in muscles so whenever muscle stiffness is there we can look at uh, either uh, the abnormal increase of the kapha quantity. So like, uh, I just want to touch on one example and come back to that. Or the kapha being, or the kapha attributes being reduced by extremely uh, hyperactive water. So both these conditions can be taken. And coming to the joints also, we if we see uh, Shleshaka kapha, so almost all doshas are present everywhere. But here the Shleshaka kapha is helping in uh, movement of the joints and also the Vanavata is also involved in the movements of the joints. So when we speak about uh, the joint stiffness, uh, once again, once again, again, the stiff joints may be due to different conditions. It may be due to Vata, it may be due to uh, kapha, it may be due to Ama. So all these conditions, uh, it may be there. Considering these uh, conditions, uh, we need to analyze whether uh, there is a, a probably if vata is involved in stiffness, so it will be associated with other vata attributes. And when kapha is involved in the in causing the stiffness, the other kapha attributes like snigdata and other things uh, will be uh, more involved. Here, upashaya and upashaya, how to find out whether uh, vata is causing the stiffness or kapha is causing the stiffness or ama is causing the stiffness. For example, in a condition called as uh, like ama vata, so which uh, basically takes its origin from the gut, there may be stiffness all over the body. So there may be the uh, stiffness of the entire body or uh, part of the body. So when there is uh, stiffness, it may be due to ama, but that ama is also mobilized into various compartments by vata. So because ama and vata both are uh, involved in this particular condition, we need to address both. The stiffness is predominantly uh, by kapha, uh, sorry, by ama in the initial conditions, later uh, the vata will also uh, take its part. So here, whenever the disease is caused by the uh, like uh, two or three components, so each of the component may be involved in the causation of the stiffness, not only stiffness, pain or whatever it is there. Vata has a typical type of pain. Pitta has a typical type of pain. Kapha also has, when kapha is predominant in a painful condition, so there will be heaviness with stiffness. And when Pitta is involved, there will be burning sensation with stiffness. When Vata is there, there will be uh, stiffness with uh, movements, disturbance, all those things uh, we need to see. So when we need to see if Vata is increased and it is causing the uh, stiffness. So probably it is causing the dryness, extreme dryness of uh, the components involved in the muscle or the joints. And if Kapha is involved or Ama is involved, they are, uh, they are contributing towards the accumulation, like accumulative uh, uh, things. 
so our things are getting accumulated with the rama or kapha and then leading to the stiffness so in uh, kapha predominant conditions gaurava or gurutva is more common so that is a common word uh, which is uh, contributed to kapha so whenever kapha is the predominant ama is also kapha, uh, predominant ama and kapha are having similar uh, properties so there the gurutva will be identified as tapdata many times uh, this is a confusion thing only the heaviness heaviness and uh, stabdata so heaviness and stiffness may be associated with each other so due to heaviness there may be stiffness due to stiffness there may be heaviness if that is a condition and the disease is caused by kapha and kapha qualities are there in and around the, the involved tissues so definitely it is a contribution by either kapha or ama so on the contrary if the vata is involved so there will be dryness so there will be the muscle may lose the mass and the tissues in and around the joints may become very weak so there is extreme dryness so like in uh, a case of sandhigata vata also there may be stiffness because of the kapha uh, totally being dominated by vata there so the vata's uh, qualities rukshatva karatva all these things making uh, the kapha almost disappear from the joints the protection the lubrication and the easy movements which are happening at the joint may be meddled by uh, vata so one more thing uh, to look at is also the age predominance probably in the earlier part of uh, the life so when kapha is predominant in that period if kapha, if stiffness is more we can consider that it is predominantly caused by kapha so especially so so if it is in the middle period of uh, uh, the life where pitta is predominant so there also because ama also we know presents with a inflammatory condition like, like in amavata so there may be inflammation due to accumulation of ama and other things when we see so there kapha or pit, uh, sorry kapha or ama may be involved in that particular condition in the later part of uh, the life as with the aging process if there is stiffness it may be predominantly due to vata so another way of looking at it is the upashaya and upashaya the treatments we give with what what the things are getting relieved so generally uh, vata and kapha when they are involved in the stiffness and also the ama ama is involved in the stiffness maybe some treatments will give a similar pattern of relief like in uh, take for example in uh, if vata is involved abhyanga so like uh, using uh, a herbal oil massage in that particular uh, place and also pampering with the joints and also the muscles and then followed with swedana snehana and swedana and probably some oral uh, medications to combat vata vata nalomana and also the snikta chikitsa when we are following this particular thing the stiffness may be relieved stiffness will definitely be relieved if it is vata on the other side if you just apply oil and leave leave off just don't do anything even the swedana that may also pamper vata sneha pampers vata uh, what happens with swedana is it more relaxes the stiffness so snehana followed by uh, swedana that is lubrication followed by sedation or uh, uh, heat therapies will be more relaxing in vata conditions and when we go to the ama conditions it is also similar the pattern will be the similar so in ama conditions also when we give only snehana or lubrication as per the theoretical references and also what we have seen if it is typical ama vata and ama is involved in the muscles and also the joints and any other tissue only snehana will aggravate that condition so there swedana is mandatory in vata predominant condition swedana is an obligation even if you apply sneha and leave so that will give or a soothing massage we also call it as abhyanga and samvahana there are two types abhyanga is putting a little pressure and giving a massage samvahana is just mrudu sparsha so just like uh, pampering the joints and pampering the muscles when we do that vata will be very much relaxed and it will be in a happy zone but when we come to amavata only applying oil or uh, any sneha will enhance the properties of uh, ama in a bad way because ama sneha and kapha all are having similar properties so only application of sneha will not work in ama there definitely we need to think of dif uh, dif uh, different things in sandhigata vata a sneha dhara sneha dhara on the joint may help take for example there is a knee joint if we do sneha dhara it will help in uh, ama vata uh, so, sorry in sandhigata vata so where vata is predominant in that condition when we come to amavata rather than sneha dara we can go for something rukshas like valuka sveda or we can go for a dhanyamla dara dhanyamla dara rather than sneha dara will give much relaxation in amavata on the other side if we do sneha dara the person will not feel relieved of the stiffness and pain they will increase by evening 
so all these things uh, should be taken into consider uh, to rule out whether vata is involved or tapa is involved or ama is involved so we have different types of investigations like that to find out which is involved in uh, ayurveda upashaya and upashaya some some trial and error methods or some uh, treatments small treatments which are given to uh, surface or to reduce the involved dosha these things are very important for us to find out so the treatment moreover depends on whether it is vata predominant or kapha predominant or ama predominant so in this condition before i uh, conclude my uh, the explanation regarding this uh, stabdata i would like to take a reference from a condition called as urustamba here i am having our uh, uh, madhavanidana which was uh, recently launched from easy ayurveda to uh, read the reference so it's so happy to read read it from our own book uh, here in urustamba uh, nidanam so that is 24th chapter i'll read out a couple of uh, lines sashleshma meda pavanaha so here the samprapti i'm going sashleshma meda pavanaha sa aam matyartha sanchitam sashleshma meda pavanaha sa aam matyartha sanchitam abhibhuya itaram dosham uru chet pratipadyate after this sakti asti ni prapuryante shleshmana stimitena cha tada stabrnoti tenoru stabdau shitava chetanau two times the word uh, stabda has been used here tada stabnoti tenoru so why this condition is called as uru stamba uru is thai here or the lower limb in gross we can take major, uh, majorly the uh, thai thai portion is getting stiff only the thai is getting stiffness this is a uh, rare and a strange condition explained in ayurveda what was the logic of me reading this uh, shloka is see the beautiful explanation sa shleshma what are causing the stiffness here sa shleshma kapha meda fat pavanaha vata vata is the main culprit here so it is the main leader here sa because it can only mobilize the things sa aama matyartha sanchitam aamam atyartha sanchitam see the atyartha sanchitam here excessively accumulated or aggravated vata kapha aama meda all these things are involved in the causation of the stiffness of the thigh so what what can we logically understand here is stiffness can be caused singly by vata singly by kapha singly by aama and when in different combinations like vata and kapha may also combine to form stiffness vata and aama as in aama vata can combine to form stiffness only aama can produce stiffness aama and kapha can produce stiffness together and in conditions like urustamba why this condition is difficult to treat is because the involvement of all these factors see here vata is totally having contrasting uh, uh, attributes in comparison to kapha aama and meda kapha aama and meda are all having similar properties vata is having opposite properties but it is the vata which is very mischievous and mobilizing all these things into the thighs okay sashleshma meda pavanah samamatrata sanchitam abhibhuya itaram dosham again abhibhuya itaram dosham even pitta can get associated associated in a later context uru chet pratipadyate all these move towards the uru or the thigh saktasti ni prapuryante so all these doshas will fill in the sakti asti that is the thigh bones or the thigh muscles entire thigh asti has been used here asti also will be involved so the person will feel in this condition a typical condition as if as if his leg has been replaced by somebody else's leg so that is a very important parakaiva so is the word which is used uh, uh, in the context there parakiya viva parakiya viva means so as if his leg has been uh, replaced by somebody else's leg so that is the feel here abhibhuyetaram dosham uru chet pratipadyate they will come to the uru saktasti ni prapuryante so these all components get filled in the sakti asti that is the thai and the thigh bones shleshmana stimitena cha okay shleshmana see shleshma is also involved in uh, the causation of this uh, condition shleshmana stimitena cha stimitena is a feeling of dampness wetness as if the part has been covered by a wet cloth tightness or the stiffness caused by vata and kapha here tada stabnoti tada so finally he concludes acharya by telling tada stabnoti so after all these events take place the stamba or the stiffness of the thighs take place tena uru where in the uru that is the thigh beautiful explanation here in chronology stabdo so what happens the thigh becomes stiff sheeta it is cold the person will feel excessive coldness in the thigh in comparison to the other parts of the body achetana o so the person feels as if there is no life in that particular part so that is in the thigh in this particular context stiffness 
coldness and as if there is no life at all and as if his leg has been replaced by somebody else's leg all these feelings are there now how do we conclude which is predominant here all things are predominant here moved by the mischief vata and ama meda kapha everything is involved in this particular condition so why i quoted this example from madhav nidana is to understand that tabdata stiffness is caused by various components as i said it may be individual vata kapha ama or all together with uh, the meda also contributing as in the example of uh, uh, urustamba so the treatment also depends on which is uh, uh, predominant in this particular uh, condition so this is uh, this this to a good thing i just want to add to the explanation about the urustamba thank you for the wonderful wonderful and comprehensive explanation sir with this background now coming back to the question for which dr gura sir had answered briefly so this was a question again that i want to know if my understanding is right so in this case the person that are asking only about the stiffness of muscle and muscle tension only but with the uh, raghuram sir's explanation uh, very detailedly we have understood that muscle uh, stiffness bone stiffness uh, etc are to be differentiated and individually the underlying factors such as ama etc to be considered so uh, stiffness of muscle tension is a sign of vata aggravation which is also dryness created because dryness is a characteristic of vata dosha to reduce vata fermentation with hot water is done to reduce dryness thereby adding water element and bringing in kapha dosha to that region rendering it soft and supple so to this dr gura just have had answered in brief as follows stiffness and increased muscle tension is due to vata dosha is correct dryness is also created by increased vata dosha as vata is having innately ruksha guna or dryness quality to overcome this we need to do snehana or oleation and swedana or that is fermentation as snehana and ruksha are to constant contrast qualities each one will uh, try to suppress the other So similarly, stiffness and the cartinia. Cartinia means the uh, hardness uh, are due to stubbornness or stiffness and cold qualities of vata dosha, and will be suppressed by ushna guna. So, uh, from my understanding, what he's trying to say is that the water quality is, of course, a part of the you know kapha dosha and part of healing. But if the muscle stiffness is dry, caused directly due to the ruksha guna or increase. due to the vata dosha then it it should be properly countered with the snigdha guna or anxious quality uh, guru sir your further comments on this please. so first of all <clears throat> we need to understand what do you mean by stubbornness or stiffness and where exactly it is we have in uh, general practice when we come to you know practice area then we get typically people complaining of muscle stiffness and joint stiffness particularly when it comes to joint stiffness the more number of cases what we get they are from the knee joint because knee joint has been designed in such a way that it has a capsulated cover and whenever there is irritation or inflammation and anything inside that the kapha increases locally the sleja kapha but there is a clear cut avarna covering which cannot make the things to go out or doesn't allow it to go out then automatically the concentration of the sleja kapha in that joint will increases and when such increased pressure is there it makes the joint to become more stiff and the movement is hampered so here in this particularly the knee joint because of the over secretions of the sleja kapha reducing the activity of vata this is we can see it in many ways in uh, osteoarthritis or sandhi vata also we could see this and you could even see in amavata but point is whenever a muscle is having a stiffness we need to understand what is the reason for it when we know the reason exactly why the stiffness is there then accordingly we can plan it very easily either the influence of vata or the influence of kapha as a major factors helps the formation of stiffness maybe individually or both together many times when something as sampratti has been already started up then even into that maybe because of the nidana even pitta may also get involved at the later stages and that may cause uh, irritation or maybe like burning sensation so whenever a patient complains to us regarding the stiffness it is our duty to examine and understand that whether it is purely due to vata if it is vata then the stiffness there will not be any plumpiness and 
the joint or whatever it is will not be having any enlargement compared to its earlier times and it may also have some painful conditions and because of the pain feeling the patient may be unable to make it the joint move and he may be feeling that it is stiff that is the one reason so in it is prominently the dosha involved is vata whereas there is a secretions and there is a stiffness due to the secretion or you can say joint effusion in those conditions it is involvement of kapha as well so in that condition accordingly we can planning can be done see for example if it is a purely of vata and there is a pain and stiffness and there is no much secretion we can try to manipulate with the movement it can be done but when the patient is asked to do it by himself then there is a difficulty because of pain he is unable to move it and in such type of things that stiffness purely our aim should be towards nullifying the vata where we can select shamana chikitsa in the form of snehana and swedana snehana and swedana by using any of the vata hara tailas they be narayana taila it may be um, karpura taila it may be parashuta taila it may be even mahamasha taila the things can be used and followed by fermentation will reduce the stiffness if the stiffness is due to the involvement of more kapha there comparatively pain is less but stiffness is more in that condition it is better to use a karpura taila with brahat saindavadi taila so the brahat saindavadi taila and karpura saindavadi will directly act on the locally and try to remove the excess fluid from the joint my particularly the micro circulations and diffusion so thereby reducing the pressure over there and release the stiffness and whenever if it is a joint associated with the stiffness associated with the burning sensation then you can select a little bit of a cooling materials like chandana taila can be added to that to little bit or it may be even any ice packing can be initially given so these type of things things are also will try to reduce the condition the basic thing is that whether we need to understand whether it is a simple joint stiffness or the muscle stiffness for example any muscle stiffness if it is there definitely it is because you can see you can understand that stiffness means previously the muscle was comparatively tender and soft now it is showing a extra tightness so that tightness has gone I mean appear just because of a peculiar vata janadi uh, signaling that is continuously giving in the form of a signal thereby it is tightened so it may be you can consider as vata vruddhi avastha it is increased vata so there what you can do is nullifying or soothing the inflamed nerves or the vata nadis will definitely soothe the condition thereby it reduces the vata so whenever there is a particular muscle or a group of muscle is stiffened maybe like hamstring muscles a group of muscles getting stiffened and because of the sports injury something sometimes it may happen a such type of things the better thing is again sufficient oleation with any of the suitable uh, yogas like brath vata taila i can prepare it sometimes i mean not brath vata um brath saindava the taila can be prepared and it can be used which will reduce the uh, inflammation there along with that you can add karpura taila to that similarly such combination even narayana taila balashikanta taila according to the need and if you feel there is a joint or a tissue there is a um, datu kshetva then you can use mahamasha to overcome that like that the combination of oils can be done and such type of things followed by fermentation definitely soothes the irritated nerves or the vata nadis and thereby that signaling will be stopped and the stiffness reduces this is what the total pathology is and samprapti is and how to break it so at the level of clinical setup uh, famous singer uh, celine dion who famously sang the titanic title song she suddenly has become a victim of stiffness syndrome and she is like chair ridden meaning she cannot move on her her own at all this is like celine dion hope uh, I and mean, people are born in the 80s and 90s might uh, remember her so this was a recent function in which she was attending uh, she was attending her son's wedding where she is like completely uh, stuck to her chair and she cannot move and the disease that is causing her is the stiff person syndrome uh, 
and sick person syndrome is uh, considered as uh, you know one of the reasons they are uh, enlisted as autoimmune that can also that can also be due to say stress etc et varieties of uh, causes are enlisted for that um, is a rare autoimmune disease that causes muscle spasms and extreme tightness and would postpone all, uh, so that is uh, cellulose dose condition so ama plays a very major role also in the stiffness and you know it, though may not be accurate all the times even uh, you know, many many times even the uh, ama condition is related with uh, with autoimmunity so th that was just uh, another side point and uh, uh, so stabdata in ayurveda and with doshas involved uh, everything has been covered uh, one more example uh, i would like to give here is from Vatavedi, uh, a condition known as Dandapatanaka, as uh, Dr. Hebbar sir was mentioning about Silentian who sang the song in uh, Titanic. Uh, here uh, there is a reference, Kafan Vito Brusham, Vayus Tasveva Yedi Tishtati, Dandavat Stambayet Deham. We need to see Dandavat Stambayet Deham, like the body becomes stiff, like a log of wood, entire body. Maybe that was the condition I feel uh, Dr. Hebbar sir was uh, mentioned right now. Dandavat Stambayet Deham Satu Dandapatanakaha. So Dandapatanaka is a condition which is again see caused by Kafan Vito Brusham Vayu. Here Vayu and Kafa both are involved in the causation of uh, this particular problem when they afflict the entire body. So here we can take the entire body, the muscles, uh, joints, everything. The entire body is uh, afflicted just like uh, Cylinder energy was uh, suffering from. So, this condition also can be considered. So, here, though it has been uh, explained in the context of Vatavari, here we can also see the association of Kapha. Again, that's what I was telling in the, the introduction of the discussion like it's permutation and combination, predominantly Vata or Vata Kapha, predominantly Kapha or Kapha Vata. Vata Kapha and Kapha Vata will give different meanings again, which is predominant in that particular combination. Ama, Meda, all those things getting involved in conditions like Kuru Stamba. Here in Dandapatanaka, the entire body being affected. So here we need to just see. So it cannot be treated just like a, uh, it needs treatment will be ma majorly addressing Vata, but the association of Kapha also should be uh, duly addressed in this in these conditions like Dandapatanaka. And interestingly, I was just com compiling the Nanatmaja Vadis and listed. Uh, these are the ones in which the Nanatmaja Vadis are the ones which are exclusively caused by one single dosha being aggravated. Vatajana Nanatmaja Vadis, uh, Acharya Charaka, enlist. There are 80 diseases which are exclusively caused by Vata dosha, and that a lot of stiffness is there. Trika Graha, stiffness in the cycle region. Grievous Stamba. Stamba, Sabda, Graha are interchangeably used to denote stiffness. Uh, Manya Stamba, Vatma Stamba, and even Dandaka stiffness of the body is also there. Uh, so that is just one side observation. Coming back to the question, if Kapha or Ramadosha is involved after Shamana, can Udvartana be performed for shoulder pain? And uh, just to add uh, another point is that this shoulder stiffness or what you call as frozen shoulder is also a, a, a symptom of like diabetes or uh, I think yes, uh, if Kapha is involved, uh, Ama is involved, we can try Udvartana. So be before that, <coughs> go for uh, a dhara like a Danyamla dhara. And then uh, if Ruksha Chikitsa is needed, you can go ahead with uh, uh, Udvartana also. So generally, uh, Danyamla dhara will help in these conditions, Kapha and Ama uh, conditions to relieve the stiffness. And later, once Ama is relieved, uh, we can go with the uh, water predominant treatment here. So I mean, another way to look at it is that if the Kapha is involved, Involved in the for um, in the aggravated kapha is involved in the causation of stiffness. Though just to understand it from very basic perspective, it can be considered as if say you know condensation of kapha dosha, absolutely, or say, solidification of kapha dosha. The idea is to melt down the kapha dosha and then release the stiffness. So absolutely, yes. What you're when you're trying to do this, Dhanyamla Dara, you know, because Amla has so sourness and that is known to say diffuse the tension or liquefaction because it also has hotness. Amlada is there associated with Ushnata, sourness is related with hotness. That is more useful, whereas if it is Udvartana, of course, this Udvartana or you know, in powder massage or Uttan, what we call as, it comes with some amount of hotness because with the rubbing it would come. 
but that uh, dissolving the knotted and uh, solidified crystallized kapha dosha would not happen to that much desired extent we need to dissolve it and then di diffuse and dissolving both should happen Pro probably that's why uh, even dynamo is that i diffuse dissolve and uh, yeah delete so i think uh, now that is the right uh, thing uh, dr abar as you said uh, see one thing is in even in uh, udvartana what we need to see if uh, of course it is used in meda and uh, meda dominant uh, conditions it's not limited to that so we can use wherever there is a heaviness stiffness and other conditions caused by ama and also kapha or the combination of ama and kapha even mobilized by vata in such conditions but one thing we need to see is banyam uh, lagara doesn't involve pressure and uh, udvartana definitely involves pressure and we should be also looking at not uh, causing trouble to the joint when we are speaking about small joints like uh, shoulder joint and uh, so udvartana is generally done over a bigger area of the body so we can consider i am not against uh, using it i personally have not used udvartana in this conditions it can be done and uh, we need to be very cautious if at all we are using with the pressure gradient we need to be very cautious because uh, we are handling with the joints and already there is pain and stiffness and we don't know Uh, it should be manipulated in a very good way for that we need a very good therapist or the masseur to conduct that and uh, Uh, of course with the supervision of the doctor it can be done to simplify you know the kapha causing stiffness is sort of con coming from the angle of condensation whereas if vata dosha is associated with stiffness then it comes from uh, the dryness perspective you know dryness even, even in case of like osteoarthritis uh, where the gap between especially with the knee gap, gap between the uh, femur and tibia i think reduces and then causing the difficulty in the movement of knee joint so dryness is the originating factor in when it comes to uh, vata dosha aggravated uh, conditions there is this question that can calcium tablets be taken to reduce the bone and joint pain calcium tablets do not even if it is like ayurvedic calcium supplements they do not directly in, involved in reducing the pain per se if they are involved if, if at all they are helpful they are helpful in the remineralization of the lost bones due to the process of osteoporosis meaning when the bones are getting degenerated then it is useful and i think in one of the previous sessions of guru bodha we covered in detail that you know just taking calcium alone might not be sufficient and even the dhatu agni also needs to be handled there guraj sir please yeah definitely by just simply taking calcium doesn't make any sense there we need to have something which is a binding agent as well as something which is anti inflammatory there to reduce the pain maybe pains are due to the rubbing of uh, eroded surfaces so for that if you give a calcium that may go on lot there but we intend to give that or with the intention that that calcium which we are consuming it will go and settle in the uh, places where it is required but unfortunately it is not happening and uh, this uh, external calcium supplementation they are giving many times getting lot in the vessels causing atherosclerotic changes so it is not a good idea just for the sake of joint pains and uh, so, uh, giving something like calcium tablet better take some vata hara or some nullifying or shamana chikitsa is sufficient and of course the uh, calcium in the natural form through the diet is the best method uh, udvartana uh... is best therapy where we need kapha vilayana such as in case of stavlya rather than in the conditions as stiffness as rightly what uh, pointed out uh, as raghuram sir said that and that the best choice joint is involved if it is a large surface area as in case of like uh, abdominal or gluteal region then probably udvartana is a better choice jay raghu ji please if you have any points one thing that i have observed here in the us is when i speak with people who have frozen shoulder uh, many of the people that i spoke with are uh, women who are about the age of 40 45 and um, they have made some changes in their diet so either they have moved out of rice because they are gaining weight and they have moved to quinoa or other grains or they have quit drinking milk or they have made some kind of dietary changes and uh, within about 2 or 3 months of those dietary changes the frozen shoulder uh, manifests so is there some kind of relation to a diet exactly that would because that is one common thing that i see among all the women who complain of frozen shoulder and i go back and ask them what changes that you make in the diet and this is what they come up with either they move to cauliflower rice or they move to quinoa or because they gaining weight they quit something that they were not naturally having for so many years so does that 
make any difference as such in the frozen shoulder situation see first of all i will contradict with the statement that rice will increase the body weight i say it is no rice will not increase the body weight body weight is gained by excessive consumption of the food whatever the thing if you consume in excess that will result in increasing the body weight it is not the rice we have seen across the planet all people who consume in a different type of grains it may be ragi it may be jowar it may be bajra it may be you know all the millets or it may be anything or even the wheat the people are heftier obese so the obesity or the gaining of body weight is not associated with any particular grain but it is associated with the quantum what they consume when they consume excess to their requirement then there will be problem this is point number 1 second thing anything which they are consuming and change it over to something which is ruksha in nature then definitely the muscles get stiff and that may get uh, the uh, stiffness at the frozen shoulder can happen but whenever frozen shoulder complaint is there that we need to understand the two important thing one is diabetes we need to rule out the second one we need to rule out is any cervical spondylitis anything any association now wear and tear at the level of cervical vertebrae that wear and tear definitely which is once again involvement of vata so if you change over any vata kara dravyas in your diet definitely the vata will increase and that may depending upon the usage of your joints then neck joints may get hampered and ultimately even the shoulders may involve with the muscles and it may cause some frozen shoulder neck related to that we need to understand these two important things cervical spondylitis supporting to that leading to frozen shoulder and diabetes is another reason that we need to understand but whenever you shift over to any vata kara dravyas or one which enhances the vata definitely if you shift over to that type of diets definitely it leads to stiffness in the muscles and any type of you no know, almost all the varieties of uh, stiffness can be seen it may be in the thigh region it may be cramp somewhere down the line anywhere you can see these things and of course these things are very common only when you are nearing to menopause or even past the menopause stage you are already in the menopause there is a hormonal changes also inside that also make you vulnerable particularly the women folk vulnerable for these type of cramps and all those things and alters in their depositions of calcium inside the body because of the hormones so these things to be taken care of and regular management with vata hara line of treatment would be sufficient to control these things well, in, in this case it's especially a cause of increase in dryness due to the due to the dietary changes made and uh, even for the same factor even our sirdhanya so the millets for, for generally health, healthy people not recommended on a daily basis whereas they can be taken uh, uh, based upon diseases probably due to the increase of rukshaguna as a side effect of that uh, there is a comment here by carol willis that states low estrogen and progesterone can cause with greatly to frozen shoulder risk of injury and difficulty of recovery or and repair also high oxalate foot in the larger sense is a problem of wound healing lack of optimal wound healing that could be causing the thing and uh, kajal ji has pointed out cauliflower rice it could be direct cause for cause for like a you know increase of dryness and water dosha in particular there is another point here that if someone is not drinking milk what could be the natural source of calcium to get through the diet and it's pretty and calcium sources if you search in the google you will get all the other uh, things like cheese and uh, uh, different varieties of seeds yogurt beans and lentils many, many things are that out of all calcium is really easier to get even for a non milk consuming person see calcium sourcing is one of the best thing is milk agreed if somebody is not drinking milk how to get the source of calcium there are really plenty of other sources but simply taking this calcium is it sufficient to gain your bone health or your condense your bones or strength no that is not possible you have to work out if you use your muscles then the bones will be having the strength if you regularly do walking if you regularly do exercises and if you start moving your muscles the muscles are attached to the bones and the bones will be definitely putting a back pressure to control those that, uh, pull and push from the muscle so in order to overcome that they will be maintaining their mineralization so thereby they become rich in their quality so that's the reason simply i am taking a, doing a sedentary lifestyle and taking a calcium source expecting that my bones will be good no it is not like that we need to do some workouts and our muscle utilization should be there 
if muscle utilization is there then automatically body searches for this resources then whatever the calcium resources we are going to give that will be absorbed into the body and it will be taken to the places where it is exactly required in recent years there has been so much emphasis placed on enhancing gut microbiome to deal with these allergic tendencies at the root level so probiotic or fermented foods are recommended in daily diet the problem is the same fermented food has also known to cause a rakta dusti so how to resolve it at the one hand this probiotic especially the fermented foods are useful to improve the gut microbiome thereby relieving the allergic allergic tendencies and allergic disorders at the same time they can also cause increase of pitta dosha and contrary to the popular uh, popular gut micro popular gut microbiome theory can one live healthily without fermented foods or one should take it regularly still one tone of the question uh, is that you know fermented foods will in always increase pitta dosha which is not very true i mean it, it could aggravate pitta dosha to a very great extent and rakta dusti but in normal doses it, it would not is one my observation there we, and we we know already that takara being the best and, and most recommended but even there many times it's not easy to digest due to milk quality issues so first of all we need to uh, bifurcate these fermented foods generally saying that all fermented food will definitely increase the pitta but it doesn't mean that everyone will increase the pitta in the way everyone is equivalent in increasing the pitta no it is not like that there are good uh, fermented things like naturally occurring it is the takra which is a most suited for the human consumption which contains lactobacillus from the natural sources of milk whereas the fermentation caused by the distilleries in the form of wines or even the fermentation in the form of the batters of idli and dosa so these i mean the pickles these fermentation is definitely entirely different from the level of fermentation in the takra so whatever the takra we consume won't enhance or increase in such a manner that how the idli or dosa batter or pickle will increase the pitta because the involvement of ingredients over there so it is not only simply the process of fermentation but actually the water the can uh, basic in, uh, ingredient which are subjected for fermentation that also matters a lot and the level of fermentation which is uh, highly fermented you will definitely going to increase the pitta to a large extent when compared to a very mild fermented and suitable for the human gut so takra is the best for that and usually takra is given uh, with a very good uh, results whenever there is an issues with the digestion or it may be even the heaviness of the food we can give it takra with hingvashtaka churna or takra with even a simple jeera all these things will definitely help even in ayurveda like in vaishya kalpana also you know fermentation or samdana kalpana is divided into many different angles let's like get that there are things like uh, sidhu is there asava is there arista is there all these are fermented but uh, all of them are of not, not in the same manner that will enhance the pitta they are um, very you know superlative degrees from one another in their effect as a pitta vardhakas yeah so this is the class question shukta to shambhu so we are can be question that i mean it is a topic on its own and there is another question on stiffness is in stiffness with septic arthritis what therapies will be useful ragram sir please can you chime in septic arthritis is inflammation of the joints secondary to an infectious causative factor See, first of all we would like to know exactly the, the arthritis is involved with which particular joint so if at any joint it will be different from one another you cannot have the same type of treatment for every day joint if it is a ball and socket joint it will be something different where there is a covering like in a knee capsule that is a different so we need to understand where exactly it is if it is a knee joint then definitely we need to understand the septic arthritis may be because of some infectious condition but from the point of ayurveda when we understand we consider this as a involvement of kapha and pitta in that inflammatory signs are there so accordingly we go by that and we also have something like which behaves like an antibiotic in certain natures like with containing um, mercurical preparations or even it may be mahayograjaku gulu to a minor extent and to a major involvement like um, even bhuratva chintamani can be used which can also cause uh, the septic to overcome and out of, of course automatically the arthritic part will be taken care of by these things and the stiffness in that particularly septic arthritis due to the knee joint is just because of the there is a 
accumulation of uh, fusion if your fusion reduces the stiffness stiffness automatically reduces another question which uh, keeps on coming back is reboiling and recooling the water is that good or not and is that period after which we should so and is there in a period after which we should not take water say after boiling 24 hours or 12 hours once boiled water should be used within how much time and once prepared kashaya should be used within how much time so as per ayurveda to give the context here uh, re boiling is not recommended once the final product especially the liquid product is prepared meaning that in true sense if kashaya if you are preparing what was is done is done in in uh, it is a vata slash kapha disease for which you are giving kashaya it is given lukewarm and only in certain pitta disorders it is allowed to cool down and that this cool it down kashaya is administered so this applies to even the fanta and whatever the uh, things that you prepare only in case of uh, is the reheating is allowed only in case of where the process where, where the reheating is part of the process of preparation of a certain medicine uh, in case of like our leha first we prepare the kashaya and then we add many other ingredients like the sugar jaggery or any sweetening agent and then we add the uh, pulp, fried pulp of materials it, it, can, it could be amla fried amla in case of ghee fried amla in compress or it could be draksha in case of rice in case of draksha will etc and then it is reheated i mean heating is continued after filtering the kashaya or the decoction and then we get the our leha this, this is there and even in a preparation of arista also first the kashaya is done and then it is filtered then uh, then again added with jaggery fermenting agent or sugar or honey and so on and so forth and and and, and then it is kept for fermentation so uh, even in case of like thaila or dhuta kalpana you know first the kashaya is made and then it is mixed with the thaila or oil uh, ghee or oil then it is heated and continued all in all e- e- even in case of uh, water potable water if it is heated and once it once it cools down its reheating is contraindicated in even as per like core ayurvedic principles and coming back to the question that what is the period of which we should not take water all hours of 24 hours uh, guru sir can you please take it on from here please so here once the uh, boiled and then uncooled water can be consumed with the next 24 hours and beyond that it is not recommended that is one point number one and kashayas of course if you prepare kashayas at your home for the purpose immediately consuming once again it will be maximum is 12 hours to 24 hours depending upon the ingredient otherwise become it's stale so it is not possible to keep beyond that time and uh, another thing that i observed with especially with like kashaya is that it is prepared with like softer herb for example brahmi or even shatavari and uh, tulsi leaves etc it's uh, staying once once you prepare kashaya or hima or fanta whatever you want to prepare its staying capacity is like very minimal meaning within say 6 to 12 hours it starts losing its potency and also some form of spoilage you can start observing whereas it is, whereas it is hard uh, hard herbs like pith padmaka etc then it stays for a little longer period and even uh, even this is seen like a uh, in the in the preparation of kashaya the general practice is if it is done on large scale for example to prepare the herbal oil or herbal ghee uh, on the previous night herbs plus water mix it together and kept overnight and next day morning it is the heating process is started but this cannot be done in case of like a softer herbs again like our brahmi or even aloe vera especially etc even shatavari also it is difficult to do because i mean if it kept it if it is kept overnight it starts falling very very soon after in the next day more by the next day morning only so the period to which you can store once the kafa is prepared also largely depends on the nature of the herb as well
thicker and stronger and denser the hair probably a little bit more the preservation time so is it okay to use gulkand daily for the overall benefits uh, are there indications in dose uh, dose and season to consume it and what is the proper dose and duration for its con consumption definitely gulkand cannot be consumed on a daily basis for overall benefits it is not a such kind of medicine Gulkan is typically a anti pitta combination definitely whenever there is grishma rutu and sharad rutu this is the ideal time to consume summer and autumn season and provided if the person is having some pitta dominancy in his nature and during the yuvavastha the condition these condition should match and for the purpose of taking general overall benefit no it is not for the general overall benefit it is just for sake of giving a coolant effect to the body even to the gut it provides that the softness and coolant nature to the body because of its rose involved and the madhur rasas or the sweetener involved in that and the way it is been prepared it is not a type of con um, confectionery or something like that or a drug which can be taken on a daily basis once the intention for which we are using this um, combination like with the shamana if you are achieving it that it is better to drop it off thank you very much sir so that concludes today's session of guru bodha thank you all